Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And, uh, welcome you all to this. Welcome you all to this um, training. An important one for that matter, which is on the geographic information system. So we are going to look at the introduction of um, of the geographic information system, just the background and all what is um, all about the technology itself and how it's applied in uh, different fields and uh, and their work. So the geographic information system um, is a very vital and important tool in technology as a matter, which is used in modern day society by professionals, specialists in all fields of endeavors to solve problems. Um, we have several information um, systems that have been used before now, but the mm -hmm. information system is very unique in the sense that it has to do with the uh, information that uh, you reference that are linked to or tied to places on the X surface. So that's why it's very different and unique from other um, information systems. And as we have progressed through the training, we are going to see more of it and how you need this is compared to the other information system. So uh, in attempt to try to understand this term, this technolo technology, the graphic information system. So um, let's try to dissect the word itself. What is it all about? What how is it phrased and what makes it unique? And, and like I said earlier, geographic information system. Geographic, which is part of the world has to do with data collected, which is associated with some location on the space, on the Earth's surface. This is very important because every information you collect that is being introduced into this um, system and linked to the places on the Earth's surface, you can actually reference them and tell anybody where this data was collected and where how it's been introduced into the system. So the system has the ability also to um, to reference and, um, and restore it to where it is in the real world. So that's the geographic aspect of this world. That's why it's a very unique information system. And information is how to be attributes or the characteristics in which is the data, which can be used to symbolize or provide further insight to a given location. The information or data that we got gotten from the field which the graphic information system has some attributes, has characteristics, which you can actually describe just like human beings. We are all different in our own unique way. Some people have uh, light in completion and dark in completion, tall, short. So all the information that have been collected, which is which is used in this in this technology, has attributes which you can actually have a database for all the information for this uh, technology as part of a database management system for the uh, GIS. So this is where, that is where you now introduce all the information, the attributes of all the data you've collected into your database. And the system itself, system is just like an engineer system, has to do a collection of um, tools and other components, which is a seamless operation, linking the information to the geography, which requires hardware, network, software, data, and operational procedures. So these are the components that actually make up this um, technology, a system itself, a complete system. So these are, without all, we, 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 if you don't have any of these components, you may not really have um, a good resource or seamless operation while trying to um, um, adopt or use this important technology. So that is the, the nutshell how um, the world came about and how it's restructured as it's related to its uniqueness. So what is GIS? Like I explained it, it's an uh, area, it's an opening that stands for geographic information system. And uh, yeah, according to X-ray, which is a very um, um, vital or important um, player in this industry, Actually, is an environmental system and search institute. They are very vital and very important player in this industry. According to the additionary, um, GIS technology, GIS itself, 
was defined as a, a collection of computer hardware, software, geographic data for capturing, storing, updating, manipulating, analyzing, and displaying of all forms, forms of geographically referenced information. Notice the word geographically referenced information, all this information that have been captured and gone through all these processes and have to be linked to places on the earth surface. So that is the, the, the definition according to Ezra of uh, GIS. And this means that uh, GIS users expect support from the system to enter the, different, the reference data, to analyze this data to various ways and to produce presentations in terms of your output which will be in terms of maps um, um, and other display, other information at the end of the day after for in terms of the processing of the information. So the graph information system, like I have explained earlier, is simply a computer, a computer based system that provides us with the following four types of capabilities to handle the reference data for a system to be uh, how this capability uh, have to return a geographic information system you must have their capability to uh, handle these four types of um, processes. And the first of it uh, is the data capture and preparation, which is the first stage in our attempt to explore the capabilities of this technology. And this has to do with the um, data about the storage phenomena which is entered into the GIS. GIS. So, so yeah, for you to actually have information, you have to go ahead and capture the information, which will be through um, primary sources or secondary sources, where you can source it from the internet or from maybe your satellite imagery, your aerial photograph, or scanned or hard copy map. Those are data that you have to bring or introduce into your GIS and the preparation of this data, some of these data, these data are in good form. So you have to actually go ahead and process this data. That's the preparation aspect of it. You process this data to the required standards and formats that is suitable for the system you are using. By using to, by carrying out process such as maybe georeferencing this data to the required um, coordinate system of your location or trying to carry out processes like a, trying to analyze maybe satellite imagery, trying to carry out processes and trying to enhance the imagery quality so that you will ever uh, try to be, you will able, you will able to extract information from these uh, images. So these are the process that involves the data capture and preparation. And the next thing I am capability for a system, this computer-based system is a data management, which includes storage and maintenance. This actually requires a database management system, whereby you have to manage all the data that is collected in the field. And this is very important because the integrity of your data is very important, just like a information that you store on your hard drive or any other way, in another location. The management of your data is very important. You could manage your data internally within your organization or in proprietary um, database managers where the information are saved and could retrieve at any time. So that's another capability of this um, system. Another one is data manipulation and analysis. All the data that you brought into your system go through manipulations and analysis using the different tools that uh, are within this computer-based system, within the different software that you, have, that you use for this uh, operation. And the manipulation, you try to um, introduce information or try to twist the data to the appropriate um, format or method that you really want to extract from this system. So, it's just a way of representation and of your new of the data in order to gain new insights to what this information, the information that are embedded in this data. And the another capability of this system is data presentation, which is the, like the final stage in which the results of the analysis are presented in different formats through maps, through maps, through diagrams, charts, 
has this communal system has that ability. So in the not in um, after after um, manipulating and maybe uh, analyzing your data, you need to present it to the public, whether you have to um, maybe showcase it to uh, individuals or anybody that's interested. The different information that you can analyze and capture and try to portray to the society. So that is the uh, way of uh, presentation of your data. So nature of the what actually makes this um, information system unique? What is the uniqueness in it that uh, the system in question should come with many kinds of functionality? And this functionality includes support for various kinds of coordinate system and transformation between them. You should be able to transfer uh, transform the, the data that is used in this system from one coordinate system to the other, depending on your location and what you are trying to extract or get from this uh, uh, information system. So that's one of the uniqueness of JS and the, uh, it makes it different from other information system. Also, many different ways of computing the European data. There are so many capabilities, so many tools that you could use to carry analysis and compute several information, even the ideas that you also school. Um, information could be processed using this information um, technology. Also, a large, we also have a large degree of choices in presentation parameters, such as your color, symbol, set, and medium used. Like we, uh, the, the diagram you see on the screen, uh, it's the same map, the same information, but this system has the ability, the capability for to display it in different formats, different colors, different shapes, or in different sizes, what we call the um, scale, depending on how you want to portray or display the, the, inform your audience about the output of your, your processing or your information. So that is what makes GIS very unique. And then um, when to use GIS, when you actually need to use GIS, and GIS is one of the many tools that um, we use to solve problems that are set in the very important tool which is used to solve several problems in different fields in the society. And, um, just like uh, you would not use a financial management computer program to solve problems that is not related to finance. So you have to know when you go for GIS to solve your problems. And to determine when you use GIS to, to solve this problem, you have to ask yourself at least two questions. So is the problem special? Special in the sense that it does it have a um, tight location to the head surface? Can you do reference it to a particular location on the head surface? If you, your, your problem has some uh, type of location on the head surface, then there is a very important um, tool which you can use to solve that problem. Also, does, it, does the automation offer an advantage in terms of um, large data volume? Uh, this tool has that capability no matter how large your data is in terms of volume, the only thing you have to enhance is the, the hardware tool, which is your computer, or your information where your, your technology, the tool which you use to capture the information has to have that side volume. The system itself has the capability to handle large volumes of data. Also, routine database updates, this technology has the, that capability that whereby your information you collected on a particular location 10 years back, you can continually update them year after year or at any, at any point you need them, whereby you are now updating your database at any point in time when, when you are using this tool. And also you have that ability to handle complex analysis. Complex analysis that you can, you can help you to analyze or solve problems that looks complex whereby you, as an individual, you think it might not be possible. This technology has that ability. So that's when you now know, okay, it is time to introduce GIS. So who works with GIS? So, like I said earlier, necessary professionals from all walks of life in order to gain a better understanding of the environment, how to buy the culture of using this tool. Very important. In fact, I don't, I don't think there's any profession in the world that we not use this thing that doesn't require this technology because virtually everything or any problem you are trying to solve has some location 
start to some location on the edge surface. So it has that ability, which just for you to explore the different capabilities depending on what you want to try to use it for. So the environment, also like what we are trying to talk about like in our own sector, it refers to the geographic space of their study area and event that takes place there. So their study area, wherever they are trying to um, solve this problem, this technology has that capability. So and the professionals work with regional data, regional data in terms of special data, where these things are actually happening. So regional data in terms of saying that when once you are trying to solve a problem, you have to try to locate where these problems are by collecting the special information of this uh, of the data you are trying to introduce into the system to solve your problems. So, like I said earlier, this system has several components. Like, this, uh, like I said, in terms of uh, I was trying to explain the system that makes it um, seamless and very effective for you to use. There are several components that make the system unique and makes it, make, makes it functional. So, working guys integrate these five key components, which is your hardware, your software, your data, the procedure, and the people. So your hardware, such like um, just like your, your laptop, your handheld GPS, your camera, even your phone that has the ability to uh, have them type the uh, collect the reference data, all these are your hardware. So as you progress, you are going to see different versions of it. And uh, the hardware is a computer on which the GI is great, where you have where you have the software itself and other components. This is the, the computer system where you try to manipulate all your geographic data within them. Like I mentioned earlier, a laptop, very important component, uh, very important hardware for your GIS. And today, GIS run on a wide range of hardware types from centralized computer servers to desktop computer, which is used as standalone or a network configuration, depending on the international setting. To have a standalone, standalone um, system for computers, just like in the laptop that you use to actually process the information, the information, and carry out these processes. Or it could be in a network setting where you have a conglomerate of a um, computer system that has been configured into the network and linked to a server where you can extract your data and send your processed uh, information back for anybody to retrieve. And, um, get any information you want to get from. So that is the nature of how some of the hardware uh, that is used with GIS are being configured. And the software, uh, which is also a very vital component for the system, with your maybe ArcGIS, ArcGIS, the Elias Imagine, Drizzly, Bubble Head, all these are your software. And the GIS software provides the function and tool needed to store, analyze, and display geographic information. Though all of the um, 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 functions of the GIS, there are software for that has the capability to handle all those um, functions. And different software have their own uniqueness compared to others. Whereby, if you are trying to solve a particular problem, you go for some of them which has that unique uh, ability over others. And uh, key software components. Uh, something like the database management system, which you can use to manage your GIS database. The software that are very unique for that and have that powerful capability for that. Also, tools for imputing and manipulation of geographic information. We have some of them to that um, can handle virtually everything like your objects. You can use that to uh, impute and relate your data, analyze, even store the data as a database. Also, RPA software company, the, the tool that supports geographic query, analysis, and visualization, and graphical use interface for easy access to tools. So, each of the software that you introduce into the system have their own uniqueness, and you have to try to explore and understand what you actually need before you now choose the software you want to use for your system. So, the data which we now, in some instances, we will the very key and important um, components, which without which we can never succeed. 
in um, uh, maximizing the full potential of this technology. So the geographic data and related cellular data can be collected in-house or post from commercial data provider in-house in the sense that you with the individual that is trying to utilize this technology to be the one to go to the field and collect this data yourself or source for yourself or the ones you don't have access to and really really needed for your uh, processing to report from commercial vendors so like i said earlier your data is an information or maybe like it has components which could be your special and then a special data that's the attribute data which will give you more information to the information you are getting from the field for instance you are trying to um, collect information on particular species of trees in a particular uh, location and you are trying to map these trees you mapping some of these trees and their location you have to also collect some attribute data of these trees in terms of maybe their height, their depth, um, the, the, maybe in terms of uh, when you were trying to collect information, what were the actual physical condition of these um, trees. So you collect all this information for each of the tree species, which will now introduce you to your database, which inform the attribute data for each of your information that you have in your system. So also most GIS employ a database management system to create and maintain a database to help organize and manage data. So GIS system could decide to uh, have a separate database where you store all the data or information that you intend to use for your, for your system in a separate database management system. So that is all about your data and then uh, it's very important that you have the accurate data and which is required for the problem you're trying to solve in order to utilize this technology. Also, the people which are the individuals that are in make use of this technology is very, very important. So GIS technology is of limited value without the people who manage the system and develop plans to apply it. Without the individual, without humans, these systems cannot stand up and use themselves. So the individuals, the people that are trained or have the capability and skills to actually use this system, this information system is very important when considering um, introducing this information system into your organization or try to solve problems. So, um, getting the right individual with the right skills is very important. And GIS users range from technical specialists who design and maintain the system to those who use it to help them do their everyday work. In terms of the people, they are people that have their own job is just to design software systems for other individuals which make use of these systems to solve their problems. So without the people, without the individual, the system will not work. As I said, if any of the components misses your system, uh, will be a failure and not, you may not be able to maximize the full potentials within it. And also the procedures. So a successful judge operate according to a well-designed plan and business rule which are the methods, the model and operating practices we need to each organization. Each organization, like for instance in our own setting here with parameter and um, converting, parameter impact assessment, we have um, tools that are unique to us which we use to solve our own problems. So each organization has their own methods and procedures which they use to solve their own problems and in order to harness the full potentials of this um, system. So this is a very vital component which you have to have full knowledge and important full knowledge about before you, you try to bring in the system to solve your problems. You have to have a design and a technology, a methodology and a, a expectation which you want to get from the system in order to really make you uh, have the full um, potential of the um, system. So, what are the functions of GIS? What are the fun what, what function do we actually derive? What is important do we actually derive from this system? So the function of GIS basically is there to capture data after capturing data, analyze the data, manipulate the data, manipulation analysis, and also presentation of the data to the public for public function. Activity in different formats that you wish to 
So data of capturing of data, the data input subsystem allows the user to capture, collect, and transform special and thematic data into digital forms. Some information data that you might want to use in your system could be uh, in a hard copy, just like your map, your hard copy map. And for you to try to extract information from this hard copy map, you have to carry out processes, transforming it into a digital format, which you can now use in your system, GIS, to actually extract any information you want to extract from them. So the data inputs are usually derived from the combination of hard copy maps, like I said, aerial photographs, loose sense, images, reports, survey documents. So these are the various um, data sources which you can use the extract data to be used in this system. As we are going to proceed, we are going to see in detail how this data are sourced and um, what is important which of the sources. So another important function of the GIS is the data storage and retrieval capability. So the data storage and retrieval, retrieval subsystem organizes this data, which is a spatial and attribute data in a form which permits it to be quickly retrieved by the user for analysis and permits rapid and accurate updates to be made to the database. So your data storage and retrieval capability of this thing is um, very in such that um, for a GIS system, is uh, it has that capability whereby you can easily query any data that you want to extract from the system and uh, extract it to carry out analysis or any other processes that you wish to carry out from uh, the data that you have stored in this data. And uh, in terms of data storage, uh, like I said, yeah, the, your database management system is very important. You have to consider if uh, whether you are going to store the data locally or you are going to store it externally through the use of um, external um, data, um, data management um, providers. Also, the company usually involves the use of database management system for maintaining attribute data, the attribute data of each of the locational data that you received are stored in your database and which can be updated at regular interval as you continue to use the data. So the data manipulation analysis function of this system is such that the data manipulation analysis subsystem allows the user to define and execute special and attribute procedures to generate derived information. So in order for you to derive the next information that you wish to get from this system, you have to carry out manipulation and analysis using the various tools that you have within this system. So that will now give you the ability now to transform this data, require any analysis with, uh, to produce any information which you can now display or present to the public and in order to understand what you're actually trying to use this tool for. And the subsystem is commonly thought of as the heart of the GIS, that is the manipulation analysis part of it. It uh, doesn't end you just um, trying to produce map. How do you have that skill that needs to actually analyze this data to extract any information? So that's why you are saying it's like the heart of the GIS. The ability to analyze various information in your system and usually distinguish it from other database information system and computer aided drafting system. That's why GIS is different from other uh, information system. The ability for you to um, analyze geographically referenced data actually makes it different and unique compared to other information systems. So another function of a GIS is the output. After uh, capturing your data, carrying out several processes, manipulation and analyze your data, how are you going to present your data to the public? You have various information, various systems, or various uh, ways which you can present your information to the public, to be in the form of maps, to be in the form of charts, and all these maps to have some embedded, uh, some embedded information which will be attached to each of the maps to display. And the, like I mentioned earlier, the, the displayed information could be in different, different forms, different colors, scales, depending on how you try, you are trying to uh, 
how you want your output to be like. If you want a gear for size kind of map or an A0, this system has the ability to give you various outputs of your process information. So that's the very key function of this uh, of this system, which you can actually explore and utilize in order to get the full benefit. So like I said earlier, there are various data which you have to introduce into your system, and these data are of various types. Basically, in GIS, we the two, the two types of data which you are which is introduced into this system to be categorized as vector or raster, raster data. And vector data is saying that it has to involve a series of um, XY coordinates, or at times XYZ coordinates, depending on them, um, if you are trying to have. 3D information or trying to display 3D information. You can actually have an X, Y, Z um, coordinates of the information that you are trying to bring in. And, um, also, basically, your vector data will be uh, in form of discrete data whereby you have clear cut demarcation from other um, surrounding um, information around them. So, your vector data could be in terms of points, lines, or polygon points, so that you are trying to um, get data of trees or trying to map trees. You could actually present them as points, which is a, a form of vector data, or you are trying to map roads or river system. You could actually present them as lines, or you are trying to map maybe a water body, a large water body, or a particular area, maybe. But that site they are carrying out your studies will be displayed as polygon. So those are various formats in terms of your vector data formats for the GIS. So another data format is your rest raster data, which is which is presented in form of a bits and cells. Uh, compared to your um, vector data, these are actually uh, continuous in nature. We classify a continuous data whereby we use to map um, features such as um, elevations, slopes, and surfaces where there is no clear cut um, demarcation within between the feature you are trying to map with the surrounding environment. Your data will actually be in form of raster data, and there are different versions and um, softwares which we actually use to process these data, different data formats format in your, in your GIS. So what are the sources of the data that you try to bring it into your system? For you to actually uh, really analyze the capacity the potentials of uh, this system, the data is very important and the sources of the data should be in terms of primary and secondary source. Primary source in the sense that you have to actually go to the field and get this data yourself. Process such as a thing we use which is them as a ground truth. And also secondary sources of data which you could actually source from vendors or different um, archives which you can introduce into your system in order to carry out processes. And the sources of data generally could be categorized as a um, Different sources such as your global positional system, your GPS, and GLONASS, in terms of uh, the GPS has to do with the American um, satellite system, and have GLONASS, which is like a, uh, a Chinese version of the GPS. And other countries have their own uh, global positioning system as well. So that is another that is very key, important source of the data for your GIS. Another source of data for your GIS is a satellite imaging. Which are collected from satellites, which are being sent to the orbit by different countries for different purposes, and um, there are different satellites in the orbit which sends out different information, such that like your weather satellites, your telecommunication satellites, which are information that are being received on the edge surface and processed to in order to solve or manipulate them. Um, some of the problems we are, we are facing. So another sort of data is your aerial photograph, your field survey uh, method, which you actually go to the field, which is the primary aspect of the data, is uh, 
very important source of data, as well as your existing map, which will be in terms of form of a data or paper format. So your aerial photograph, like I explained earlier, how to do with it, using aircraft to capture image of different locations of the air surface, on the air surface, and which has some processes which we carry out to input the coordinates or information or processes data. This area of the graph to the standard or the, the requirement that you need for your system. So that's the very important source of data for your GIS, which you can now introduce to your system and carry out several processes and configurations to extract information from them. Also, your fuel survey, which has to which you will also refer to as a, your ground treatment. How to do with you going to the field with equipment, tools, such as your handheld GPS, your differential GPS, your range finders, and all these tools have the capability of um, locating positions. They have that geofacing ability whereby information you use to, uh, to capture, uh, the data you capture from these tools will actually have um, locational properties, location uh, the coordinate system which are tied to the information that you receive from the field and which you now introduce to your system to carry out uh, your manipulation and extract any information which you need. So that is another very important source of data for the GIS. And the global functional system, uh, which we uh, uh, better at the GPS, add function to your GIS and it increases the capability. Like I said, different countries, some few countries in the world have that uh, uh, this system, which they can use to help individuals to locate their position on the air surface, and is a critical tool for precise identification of subject on the air surface, location, distances to relate a graphic picture. It also allows users to users to locate positions on the electronic map using satellite technology. So, this uh, system will actually help you to locate important. This is or locate your paint or your, yourself on the where you are on the edge of this, which will now be uh, the reference or introduced into your system to carry out processes and manipulations for your output. Satellite imagery also is another source of data from your GIS, and there are several satellites in the orbit which have different resolution, resolutions, depending on what we are trying to solve. If you the problem you are trying to solve, we, we, we actually decide on the particular satellite image which you, uh, you want to use to source your data. And like we have on the screen, like, uh, uh, we have a, a Landsat image which has a resolution of 15 meter square and uh, 10 meter square, depending on the band, and an Iconos image Image which is an which is actually the image of a Dubai, the hotel in Dubai, which was captured with an anchor image. So the supply image is very important data source for your GIS. And then depending on the resolution of data of the satellite image, you can actually choose which one you want to use for in terms of the problem you are trying to solve. Existing map, like I said earlier, is very important um, data or source of data for your GIS. You can get hard copy maps and scan the into digital format and you reference them in order to extract any information on any place on the, on the, that is contained within that map for your GIS um, analysis and information display. So those are the basic um, sources of data for your GIS. And then in all these, what are the benefits that we we'll get by trying to reach this technology. First of all, it covers a large and inaccessible area, not just like in terms of uh, using your satellite imagery. We are trying to cover a very wide area. For by just getting a satellite imagery of a location, we will have a, a, a large view or large information that covers a wide area, which you can use or extract any information from them compared to you trying to go on. Um, and your your feet or trying to walk through the whole of that area. So if you have that um, large coverage and inaccessible capability for you to assess ways you do not assess yourself. So that is one of the benefits and also fast and 
cost effective measure of um, capturing or getting information for the analysis. They are quite cheap. Also, data information are easier to search, analyze, and present. Information that you have on the database will be retrieved at any point in time, and analysis carried out and further um, displayed for uh, users or individuals to actually um, perceive or try to understand what they're trying to display. An easy update of data. Data should be updated at the line table, which we now use for for the process of analysis. Also, data can be shared and exchanged freely. You can actually stay at the comfort of your office or your home and send data, thousands of kilometers to um, individual or uh, your uh, members of your corporate organization somewhere, which you can now use or try to figure and analyze and display any information that you are trying to um, share with them. And also, is a reliable information. As that um, reliable, reliable information for decision making, it's, it's very. It helps you to gives us that capability of uh, taking appropriate decision. Whereby the, you can be sure that the information which uh, is used and is being displayed or sent for public consumption is very reliable. So, thank you for listening to this training.